Hello, welcome. This is Jenna from McGuire, and I'm glad you're here. Now, I have a longer video for you today, but I promise I really put a lot of effort and care into it in hopes that it's something that is worth your time. So this is a really fun and super simple technique of using alcohol ink on acetate. This allows you to create really beautiful colored clear pieces that you can use in a variety of ways. I have many applications for you, many techniques here, and I, I promise it's really simple. I've got a lot to share, so let's go ahead and jump in with this first example, just easily applying alcohol ink to acetate. Now the acetate I'm using today is from Simon Says Stamp. I'm really excited about this new acetate because it is heat resistant and it's very thick. So this acetate can be used for anything, shaker windows, acetate cards, you can score this and fold it, and you can heat emboss on it. You can run it through a laminator. You can use it for a variety of things. I found no warping with this, so I'm excited. I have used heat resistant acetates in the past and they're wonderful. However, sometimes you can get a little bit of warping when you apply too much heat. This doesn't warp at all. I never found an issue with that. Now it comes in larger sheets. I like to cut it down to smaller pieces, but keep a few full sheets as well. Next, I'll be using Tim Holtz alcohol inks and all the different varieties he offers. If you are new to alcohol inks, I will link to a how-to video with information on the different types up here on the top right. You can check that out. But in this video, I will be holding up to the camera each of the alcohol inks I use for each card. So if you want to take a screenshot, you can remember which particular colors I used. I will be mixing together the traditional alcohol inks, my favorites, the alcohol ink pearls, and also some mixatives and alloys, but not as much. I then will also be using alcohol blending solution. Now you can use whatever you have on hand. You could even use like Copic reinkers for this if you wanted to, but any type of alcohol ink. So it doesn't have to be the pearls or the mixatives, but you will see what those particular products have to offer throughout the video. Also, I will be using the Tim Holtz air blower, which is incredibly, I highly recommend. It is very helpful, particularly with working on acetate. I found it was super helpful. It's an inexpensive tool and one that I use in a variety of ways. Okay, so let's get started. I have a piece of acetate there on this white cardstock, just so you can see it in the video. I am just dropping some regular alcohol ink on here. You, again, you could use whatever versions you want. This one happens to be uh, alcohol ink pearl. If you're using a pearl or mixative or alloy, be sure to shake it really well before you use it till you hear that little ball kind of moving around inside so that you can be sure that it's ready to be used and it'll be nice and shimmery. So I'm just dropping colors down on here. I only do a little bit of this silver mixative. Um, whenever I use this mixatives or alloys, I try not to use too much because a little goes a long way. Okay, so I've got some colors down here. Now I'm putting some of the blending solution onto it. I start with a little bit and then I can always add more. Now I'm using the air blower to move the color around and get them moving together. So this is great because you can move in any direction you want just by tilting your hand. It also helps to kind of dry things as you're going to. So here I'm just going through and adding more until I am happy with it. There is no method to the madness that I use. I just add drops to wherever I want more of a particular color. And if some color isn't moving enough, I just add more of the regular blending solution. Now on this particular one, I'm kind of going from one corner to the other. I'm not covering the entire acetate sheet, but you definitely could if you wanted to. Here I'm adding some more of the alcohol ink pearls. I really like the shimmer it has to offer. If you are new to alcohol inks and you want to invest in a few, I would recommend the alcohol ink pearls because they have beautiful colors and a shimmer to it, which I think is really fun. Um, and you don't need a lot of colors of alcohol inks to create anything beautiful. So you could just get a few colors and have a lot of fun with those. Now in the other examples I show in this video, I'm going to talk more about that air blower and how it is a great tool, especially when working on acetate. So now here I have this beautiful color, but what I like to do is flip it over. It'll be nice and shiny on the other side, perfectly smooth and great to add to a card. So whenever I add this to a card, I flip it over so the alcohol ink is on the back. 
And by the way, forgot to mention, you could do this on any acetates you have. It doesn't have to be the one that I showed. But later, I will mention and demonstrate why this particular acetate has some benefits. Okay, so let's get going on the rest of the card. Next, we need a sentiment. So I'm using this new XL Greetings 3 from Simon Says Stamp. Has some big greetings. I silver heat emboss, thank you so much, and use the coordinating die that's available to cut it out. Now behind the sentiment, I wanted a focal point image, so I'm using this large etched tall leaf spray die. This is new from Simon Says Stamp, and I will be using it a lot. It'll be on my favorites list. It's super tall, I think it's seven and a half inches tall, so you can use it on any size card. While I don't need a super tall piece, I'm gonna cut it shorter, and I'm using this tonic mirror cardstock, so I have a little bit of shine to it. I also use the die to cut from white cardstock twice, and I'm gluing those white die cuts to the back of our pretty die cut. This is just to give it dimension. You do not need to do this. You could definitely leave it flatter if you want. I just like when my cards have a lot of dimension. I also wanted to have a white die cut frame to go around our alcohol ink piece, just to give it a finished look. So I have two rectangle dies here, and one is a bit smaller than the other. I'm taping them together on a piece of white cardstock, and I will run that through our die cut machine, and this will create a frame. You can keep those taped together so you can create a bunch of frames of the same size if you want, but today I'm only creating one frame for this card. I will be doing more frames later in this video, so you'll see more examples. Next, I'm putting some double-sided tape on the back of the frame we created, and I'll put this onto our acetate piece. Again, I am using the acetate piece backwards, so the alcohol ink is actually touching my desk right now. I just find that it's pretty to look through the other side of it, but it's totally up to you. After putting the frame on the front of this, I will just trim off the excess acetate that's sticking out. By making the frame smaller, I was able to kind of choose the area I like most of the alcohol ink and frame that. I thought it'd be fun to have some texture behind the acetate piece, so I'm using a new embossing folder from Simon Says Stamp. For Simon Says Stamp 3D embossing folders, this is the sandwich I use with my Spellbinders Platinum 6 machine. I put down the platform, then a folded piece of cardstock, and then the embossing folder with cardstock inside. It's that simple. So I'm using Gina K Design Silver Metallic Cardstock for a little bit of shine, and the Simon Says Stamp Open Circles embossing folder. I run it back and forth a couple times and look at this texture. It looks different on the two sides, which I think is fun. And this, you can use this embossing folder with whatever machine you have. Just check the description over at Simon Says Stamp for that particular embossing folder. Now it's time to assemble everything. I'm putting some double-sided tape on the back side of our acetate frame, and I'll glue that right onto our silver piece that we just added the texture to. I think it's fun to have that show through and it just adds more interest to our alcohol ink piece. I then can add this onto the front of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. I use Gina K Connect usually for my card making. I just find it's a very fast way to glue things together, even large pieces like this, because you can kind of wiggle it till it's nice and straight. Then I have my little die cut here that we created earlier, or my big die cut. I did give him a haircut to make him shorter so that he fit better on this card. I will just use adhesive, the Gina K Connect, to add this right on top of our acetate, along with the thank you so much die cut. I chose to use a Simon Says Stamp silver metallic envelope to go with it, and I did add a few like moss colored pearls from Studio Katia in the background. So there you can see the texture behind the acetate and also the beautiful color on the acetate. It does have a little bit of shimmer to it because I used the alcohol ink pearls and I used a little bit of mixative. You can skip the mixatives with the pearls if you want, but I did want a little bit of silver in there. I'm crazy about the detail on that leaf die cut, especially on that holographic cardstock. It just adds so much interest when you take this right out of the envelope. All right, so let's take this alcohol ink on acetate technique and step it up a bit and use it in some really creative ways. In this case, I got a stained glass look by using it along with an outline die cut. Now let's start with the background first. See that detail there, I just love it. This is the new Simon Says Stamp Bohemian Slim Plate. Now this creates a piercing pattern and the die is three and a half by eight and a half. So you can use it on a slimline card. 
For one of my cards, I trimmed this background down to be six by three for a mini slimline card. And then for the other card over there on the left, I cut that detail background down to be five and a half inches tall. So it went down the center of an A2 card, which is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I created note cards here out of Hero Arts Green cardstock, and I also matted our white detail pieces with another shade of Hero Arts Green cardstock. I believe these are pesto and palm greens. Okay, so the card on the left is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. The card on the right is six and a quarter by three and a quarter. So that's what I do for mini slimline cards. Okay, now that we have our cards ready, let's do the focal point of it, which is the alcohol ink leaf. I'm using these colors, which includes a gold alloy and then two regular alcohol inks. I have a piece of the Simon Says Stamp acetate here, and I'm applying a generous amount of the green first, then a little bit of like a mustard color, and then some blending solution. And then I'm dropping in just a little bit of the alloy. I use the ink blower to move the alcohol ink around in different directions and kind of get control over where the color goes. But there's another way that I use the ink blower. Since the alcohol ink keeps moving on this acetate because it's so slick, if I'm happy with the results, I'll take the ink blower, hold it about a foot or foot and a half up from the top of my acetate, and I just blow straight down on it pretty quickly. And I do that for about 10 seconds, and that kind of freezes the alcohol ink where it is. So when you see me kind of doing that from straight above, that's me kind of freezing it where it is. It helps to dry, and it helps you get the results that you want. So I really find it's a great tool, inexpensive, and a definite must-have if you do alcohol ink. Here's the final result. Again, I will flip it over so I get the more shine. And I just did an area large enough for the two leaves I wanna create for the two cards. Okay, now let's do those gold outline leaf die cuts. For this, I'm using Concord and Ninth Neutrals Foil paper, and I chose the gold. I also am using the Simon Says Stamp Ornate Leaves dies, which I just think are beautiful. I put a piece of Altenew double-sided adhesive on the back of the gold foil cardstock. Now the reason I'm doing this is that when I die cut it, our gold foil cardstock will have adhesive on the back already, which makes it really easy to adhere. This is a very ornate die cut, and I'm gluing it on top of a piece of acetate, so I thought this would be the easiest way. I really like the Altenew double-sided adhesive because it cut die cuts nicely. So now from the front of the gold foil, I am using the ornate dies to cut out the die cut shapes. And there you can see we end up with these gold foil outline stickers. So I'll put these on to our acetate. Again, my acetate is flipped over so the alcohol ink is facing the table. And I'm pressing the die cuts down. Once you're happy with where they are, you can just press them down with a bone folder just to make sure they stick. I then am fussy cutting around the outside edge of the gold foil. I know not everybody likes to fussy cut, but this really isn't a big area and it's pretty easy to do, and it's definitely worth it when you see the results. I die cut three each of the ornate leaves from white cardstock, just so I could glue those together and then glue those stacked white leaf die cuts to the back of the acetate. The reason I'm doing this is that puts some dimension behind the acetate. And I'm telling you, when your alcohol ink acetate kind of floats above the cardstock, it creates a really cool stained glass window effect. So there we have three white die cuts stacked together and I'm gluing it to the back of our acetate. And look at this, this looks like a beautiful embellishment to add to a card, and you can keep the card very simple. By the way, the card on the left, I did the three die cuts behind it, so it's raised. The card on the right, I don't have any die cuts behind it yet. Just to show you a difference in how adding the dimension behind it really makes it look cool. After completing the other leaf, I can add these onto our cards. I just put a little bit of Gina K Connect here and there along the back of the white outline die cut that's behind our acetate. And then I just glue that to the top center of our card. I also created little sentiment strips using the Simon Says Stamp CZ Design Clean Line XL Stamp Set. I really like these two greetings, sending you a hug and enjoy the day. I white heat emboss them on cardstock that matches our note card. So here you can see the final results. This is the four and a quarter by five and a half inch version. I have a Simon Says Stamp envelope to match it. 
you can see the shimmer from the alloy that we used in the alcohol ink and the beautiful colors. And you can see the detail of the background kind of showing through it too. The other card is a mini slimline card. So again, that is three and a quarter by six and a quarter inches. And I'm using a Simon Says Stamp white mini slimline envelope. This is probably my favorite of the different ways to use this technique today. I think it just gives a really simple and stunning result and is great for any of your outline dies. Okay, let's move on to our next technique. And this one adds in heat embossing to our alcohol ink and acetate. This is where it's important to have a heat resistant acetate such as the one from Simon Says Stamp. For this, I'm using this amazing stamp set. This is the Lined Leaves. I just think this has such a classic look to it and I like the tiny little sentiments. I will be gold heat embossing three of these leaves onto the acetate. So what I do is I use an anti-static powder tool on the acetate first, pretty generously. I will then stamp the images with Versamark ink. When you do this, the acetate will stick to the stamps. You just peel it off. Then you add your Hero Arts gold embossing powder or whatever embossing powder you want. It will want to kind of stick to the background because of a little bit of static, but if you flick it with your finger, it will knock right off. You could also use a paintbrush if there's a problem, but I found it ended up very clear without. Then you can heat it and look at this, absolutely no warping and I don't have to be careful. You get beautiful heat embossed result on the acetate. Then you can just use a cloth to wipe off the anti-static powder that you have on there. It's time to add alcohol ink onto the acetate. I have flipped our leaf over, so the heat embossing is touching my work surface. So we're adding alcohol ink to the back. I want that gold embossing to stay gold, so by putting the alcohol ink on the back, it can stay true color. I'm putting down some red, orange, and yellow here. I'm using one pearlize, but none of the mixatives or alloys. I am doing a few layers of alcohol ink here because I want this to be really bold. You can put less alcohol ink and make it softer and more see-through if you want. It's totally up to you. And here are the colors that I ended up using for that particular leaf. Okay, now let's do another leaf. This is the greens that I did. Again, I used some pearl, but no metallic mixatives or alloys. On the back, I'm putting a few drops of the green, and then you can add the blending solution and move it around as much as you want. So you see me using the air blower to do that. When I'm happy with it, I just kind of squeeze it a few times from above, and that freezes it where it is. So I'm still moving things around, and now I'll just kind of freeze it by blowing it a few times. Very gr good way to kind of control the color and the movement and get the results that you want. But remember, this is supposed to be kind of free flowing. You don't want to control it too much, so just have fun with it. And the best part is, is when you flip it over, no matter what, it seems to look incredible. Okay, now we have our third leaf. Again, I'm applying the color to the back of it and really not taking much effort with this. I just want to make sure you can see the different colors in the final result. And I'm putting it down pretty heavy here because I want these to be bold. And by the way, these are the colors that I used on this particular one. Once they are all dry, I will use the coordinating dies to cut these out. So I just tape the coordinating die to the front so the heat embossing is facing up this time. And I put a piece of scrap paper into my die cut machine because I didn't want the alcohol ink to leave any color behind on my die cutting plates. After running it through, check this out. I just love that gold outline with the beautiful color behind it. So depending on what color cardstock behind it, you'll get different looks. I usually do white or a light color. Okay, now for that background there. I thought this background stamp went great with the leaves that we just created. This is the Simon Says Stamp Interlocking Leaves Cling Stamp. I'm stamping it onto a white rectangle that I die cut with a faux stitched rectangle die and that will just be a nice backdrop. I am then using the Simon Says Stamp Thankful For You die set. This is a great set that can be used in a few different ways. I'm using the Thankful For You together, but remember you could do Thankful by itself too. So I added our stamped piece with a dark brown mat onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch craft note card. I'm adding the Thankful For You. I did the background from white cardstock, and then I die cut Thankful from the gold foil cardstock, and For You from dark brown cardstock to match the mat. 
Now, while there is liquid adhesive still wet underneath the die cut, I'm just sliding in our acetate pieces and that's how it'll be held there. That's why I use a strong adhesive like Gina K Connect that I can trust because I know just that little bit under there will hold all those die cuts in place. So you can use like a clear tape behind the leaves, but I just like to make sure nothing is showing through. Okay, so here is the finished card. I have a Simon Says Stamp V flap fold envelope to go with it. It's just white. And I did add some Trinity Stamps gold baubles as little accents here and there. So check out the shine on those leaves. You have the gold outline, outline that's heat embossed, and then you have that bold color with the acetate. It looks like a stained glass window. This is a technique that you could do with many stamps. Okay, now let's do alcohol ink acetate die cuts. This is fun with large die cuts, just so you can see more of the alcohol ink. And I thought this large daisy would be perfect. So this is the Simon Says Stamp Etched Layered Daisy Die Set. There are two die cuts and you just glue them together for a layered look. Super simple, lots of etching detail on it. So I have die cut both of those from acetate. And here are the different colors that I'm using on this. I threw in the snow cap mixative, which is white. So I kind of little white areas showing through. I ended up covering that up some, but do know that that is an option. If you want white on the acetate, it shows up beautifully, the snow cap. Okay, so onto these acetate die cut pieces. I'm just putting a bunch of alcohol ink. I do have a silver in there just to add a little bit of shine. Now at first I was going to go pretty light with this, but I ended up building up additional layers so it could be darker. I just kind of changed my mind along the way and that's something fun about alcohol ink. You can build up the colors. You can also remove the colors by just wiping it with an alcohol wipe, uh, rubbing alcohol. It's just a really forgiving technique and that's why I like using alcohol inks. Okay, so I have my two die cuts here, and once I'm happy with them, I just let them dry or use the air blower to dry them. I usually don't like to use a heat gun to dry them, but you can if you want and if you're careful. Okay, so now I have my dried alcohol ink petals here, and I am gluing them together along with a white die cut. The white die cut behind it just helps the color show through more. Okay, I did die cut another flower from silver uh, cardstock, and I just cut the center out, and I'll glue that to the center just to give it a bit of definition. Next, I have the Simon Says Stamp Fine Petal Background Plate Die. This is really cool because check out what it cuts. You can make the little flowers kind of bend up and put foam tape behind it to create a background with dimension. But for today's example, I decided to leave it flat. So this is super simple. I just like the etching of the background, how it matches the etching of the die cuts we use to add on top. So I die cut it from pink cardstock and I put all to new adhesive along the whole back of it just to make sure that it lays flat. You could just use regular adhesive if you want. I did trim the sides down a bit and I've added it to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. Next, I have the tall leaf die cut that I showed you before. There are two white die cuts glued together here, and I'm kind of bending it so it has this curvy feel to it. That's something fun that you can do with this die cut. I'm just putting tape there to hold it in that shape while it dries. I did use Gina K Connect liquid adhesive behind that. Once that is dry, I can remove the tape and then add our daisy right on top of that using the liquid adhesive once again. Okay, now we can do our last element, which is the sentiment. I decided to do a foiled love die cut. Now I'll be using the Spellbinders Glimmer Machine. If you're new to that machine and want a closer, slower look at the technique, I will link to a video up here in the top right. On the left, I have my Spellbinders Glimmer Machine and it has warmed up and is ready to be used. On the right over there on the top, I have the Simon Says Stamp Love Hot Foil Plate. I then have a piece of Spellbinders hot foil, that's the purple. I put the plate onto the warm surface of the glimmer machine, our foil pretty side down, then a piece of white cardstock. On top of that, I put the two shims that come with the glimmer machine, and then I press the timer button. When the light stops flashing, it'll be ready to move to the next step. 
In the meantime, I wanted to mention that there is the Simon Says Stamp Hey Love die set that came out a long time ago, and that lines up perfect with this foil plate. The timer's done, so I'm taking the platforms out and moving it over to my Spellbinders die cut machine, and I go back and forth a couple of times slowly. So the Spellbinders glimmer machine applies the heat, the die cut machine applies the pressure, and look at this beautiful foil result. Now I can use the coordinating die from the die set to die cut this out. I know foiling isn't for everyone and getting another machine isn't always that fun to do, but I just find that I'm using it more and more. I think it's a fun way to add shine to your card. You can also use dies to foil on the hot foil machine. I will link to a video showing that if you want to check it out. Okay, so I also stamped a sentiment strip from the Simon Says Stamp Furry Friends stamp set. There are super cute images on the set, but I really like the sentiments up there on the top. So I stamped one with Simon Says Stamp Hot Mama ink because that matches our alcohol ink nicely. And then I will glue that below the love die cut on our card. Okay, now you may notice on this that the leaf sticks off the top of the card and the flower hangs out the side of the card. That means I need a bigger envelope. So the note card itself is four and a quarter by five and a half inches, but I love having pieces hang off. So I just put it in a five by seven envelope. Love that because it's very unexpected and something Hallmark wouldn't do. I did add some Trinity Stamps silver satin baubles here and there, but check out the shine and all of the color on that alcohol ink piece. Doing alcohol ink on acetate is just a fun way to add cool elements to your cards. You can also see the detail of all the etching that these dies do and how it all kind of goes together. And then we have that foil. It just adds a nice shine to go along with our daisy. Okay, I thought that was fun doing foiling, so I thought I'd show you, you can actually foil on acetate. I like to use the Simon Says Stamp heat resistant acetate, so I don't have to worry about any warping when applying the heat. Let's start with the background first. I use the Simon Says Stamp Peel Apart Leaves Cling Stamp. This is really cool because it can be, come apart, so you can just stamp certain areas, maybe like a border or a corner of your card, or you can do different colors of ink for the different areas. I'm just using it as a background stamp all pieced together. So I have a white note card that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I'm stamping this with a light ink. This is an older Hero Arts soft sand ink. Just to add a little bit of interest to the background. Now let's do the foiling on the acetate for the main piece of this card. I'm using the Simon Says Stamp Falling Leaves Hot Foil Plate. I have a piece of acetate. Then I have a piece of Glimmer Hot Foil. Then I have our hot foil plate. Whenever you do this, make sure the pretty side of your foil touches the hot foil plate. And I'm just gonna tape all of those together. I have my glimmer machine ready to go. And I'm laying this down so a little more than half of the hot foil plate is on that gray area which gets hot. We're gonna have to run this through twice because this hot foil plate is super long so you can use it on a slimline card if you want. Once the timer's ready, I can take this out, move it over to our Spellbinders die cut machine and run that back and forth. And by the way, if you have a different die cut machine, there are other excellent foil machines that you can use to go with it. Okay, so now we've run it through half. I'm just gonna shift this down so the rest of the hot foil plate is touching the gray area. And I'll do the same process. I'll press the button on the timer until it's ready to go and then take it and move it over to the die cut machine. So you can do really large hot foil plates on the Glimmer machine with no problem or any of the foiling machines out there. Okay, so let's take this off and look at the beautiful foil on the acetate. Super cool, and because this acetate is thick and heat resistant, we don't have any warping at all. Okay, now it's time to add alcohol ink to this. Once again, I'm flipping my acetate over so the foil is down touching my desk and we're protecting it while we apply color to the back. Here are the colors I'm using, just a few of the alcohol ink pearls. The rest are regular, but again, you could use all pearls for everything. I just really like the shimmer. So I'm quickly applying a bunch of colors and then some blending solution and I just move the color around. I did continue to do this a few times because I wanted to make sure there wasn't too much of one color. So I just kept adding. I find this very therapeutic and something that I really enjoy doing. I do recommend following any of the safety precautions that they have over on the Ranger website when using alcohol inks. 
Okay, so you can see me moving this around with the air blower. When I'm happy with the results, I let it dry and I trimmed it down and look at that, beautiful. I wanted to put two gold foil cardstock strips down the side. So I put two pieces of double-sided tape right along the top edge of this acetate piece. So the adhesive is facing up. Now I'm using the corner of my Misty stamping tool. You can also use the corner of a uh, scoreboard, but this just helps to get it lined up. I have my gold foil strips and I'm pushing that right up into the corner and that allows me to be sure that it's right up against the edge of the acetate. You could do this without a corner to tuck it in, but I really find it helps. After I do that side, I will flip it over and I will add a foil strip to the other side, right up against the edge and then we can trim off the excess. Next, I'm cutting very thin strips of foam tape, and I'm putting that on the back side of the acetate. So this is the side where the alcohol ink is actually. And I'm putting it right along the edge, so it'll be hidden by the foil cardstock that we put on the front. This will just give it some dimension so that when we add it to our card, it's raised a bit. As I mentioned before, I think it looks really cool, but you could glue this down flat if you prefer. I then put that down the center of our stamped note card, and I'm adding a sentiment on top. This is the Simon Says Stamp Big Happy Birthday die set. I cut the shadow from white and the words Happy Birthday from gold foil cardstock. And I'm using a Trinity Stamps gold bobble to dot the eye on the birthday, just because I lost the little die cut for it. And then also put some of these bobbles along the background where the foiling is. I have a metallic envelope from Simon Says Stamp to go with it. And here is a look at the completed card. Look at that alcohol ink behind the foiling. I just think that is gorgeous. So if you have a foiling machine, try doing foil on acetate and then put that alcohol ink on the back side of it and you get such gorgeous results and it really doesn't take all that long. It's a very simple card design in the end. All right, time for our next technique. And this is an easy one, but it gives a really dynamite look. And this is to use an embossing folder on your acetate along with alcohol inks. It really sparkles in the light. These are the colors I'll be using on this one. So you can do a screenshot if you want to. And I also used the Simon Says Stamp Triangle Burst Embossing Folder on a piece of acetate. I just did it how I would do with cardstock and it worked great. Okay, so now on the back of that embossed acetate piece, I'm applying alcohol inks. At first, I wanted this to be kind of light, but I used a, like a dark bluish purple there that made it pretty intense. So I decided to go all out and I put tons of colors on the back. I put some silver, I put some white, and I just went to town. Lots of layers here. It doesn't matter because we'll flip it over in the end and look at that. Such beautiful texture to that. I'm skipping through a lot of this to save time, but really there is no method to it. I'm just moving colors around until I'm happy with the results. Okay, so I trimmed that background down and I added a white die cut frame to the front, just like I did on my first card example in this video. I also used the Simon Says Stamp Layered, la uh, layered Lazy, Layered Daisy uh, stem set. And I die cut that from white cardstock and put it on the front of our acetate window. Now on the back of the acetate window, I'm putting some double-sided uh, adhesive paper from Altenew. The reason I'm doing this is this will help to, it to lay flat. There was a bit of warping to the acetate because of the embossing folder. But when you put it down this way, it flattens out nicely. I'm adding that onto a top folding four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. So this is pretty easy to pull together. Now for a sentiment, remember that thankful for you die set I showed you earlier? Well, I just used the for and you word and cut off the thankful part so I could get a completely different look. I really love that texture on the acetate. Look at how it just twinkles in the light and then the bold color behind it thanks to the alcohol ink. Now, if you don't have alcohol inks, you could always do like a watercolor background and then do the embossing folder on the acetate and glue that on top and you'll have bold color shining, shining through. However, putting the alcohol ink on the back of the acetate really makes a huge impact. And last but not least, we're going to use our alcohol ink acetate to create a window for a shaker card. This happened to be my favorite of all the techniques and I plan to make more of them later on. Now here are the colors that I used. You can do a screenshot if you'd like. And this time I want a lighter, more see-through background. So I am putting first down some blending solution, 
actually quite a bit of blending solution onto my acetate. Into that, I am dropping the colors. Then I will use the air blower not to only move the uh, colors around, but to move them out so that I get like a thin see-through uh, layer of alcohol inks. The reason I want it to be lighter and more see-through is because there will be little shaker bits in there that I want the person to be able to see. So I'm really pushing those out. And then when I'm happy with the results, I kind of freeze it there by just air blowing right here. You see me doing it from above, just directly down on that. And that kind of freezes that area. Really, once you start playing with it, this is so easy to do. I find for some reason the alcohol inks on this acetate are easier to work with than on Yupo paper. I don't know. I think they just move really well and you can get great results. Once that was dry, I'm just trimming down to get the area I want to use for my shaker window, making sure I capture some of the blue, pink, and purple. Next, let's create the backing for our shaker window, what you see through to it. This is the Simon Says Stamp Scroll Flourish Cling Stamp. It's a big one, so you can use it on 5x7 cards too. I'm using the uh, Seafoam ink, the new saturated ink from Simon Says Stamp. It stamps beautifully, and I just have a soft blue pattern on my white cardstock. Now remember how I created those white rectangle frames earlier in the video? Well, I'm taking the largest of that rectangle, and I'm cutting that from our scroll background. So this will be the back to our window. So there, I'll just run that through the die cut machine. I did put the two rectangle dies, one slightly smaller than the other, together, and I die cut it five times from white cardstock. So I had five white die cut frames, just like I showed you earlier. I'm gluing four of these frames right onto the front of our stamped piece. This will form the walls of our shaker window. You could use foam tape for this, but I like to stack die cuts instead because I feel like they hold up better and they won't have a sticky edge for your shaker bits to stick to. Once again, I'm using the corner of my Misty to make sure that I get the frame right up to the edge of our, our stamped background. Okay, so I added one. Now I'm putting some Gina K Connect right on top of that frame and I'll add another. And I'll continue to do this until I have four die cuts glued on top of that and that forms the walls for our shaker window. Now let's create the top of our shaker window, the window itself. There's our acetate piece. I have flipped it over so that the alcohol ink is touching my desk. I have our fifth white die cut frame and I put double-sided adhesive around the back edges of it. And then I will put this on top of our alcohol ink piece. So one of the frame die cuts will be on top of the alcohol ink window. Before we put those together, let's add our decoration to the front of the window. I'm using the Simon Says Stamp Etched Crocus Stems dies. I love that all of these dies that they recently came out with are flowers of different looks, but all the same kind of size, so you can mix and match them and use them together. Here I just used this die set, cut the pieces from white cardstock, and I'm gluing them to the front of our acetate window. So these will look like they're floating on top of our shaker window. Okay, into the walls of our shaker window, I've added some sequins. I did some pink and blue ones in there, and you can really put whatever you want in there. I did also add a few gemstones too. Now I'm pushing all of those down a little bit because I'm going to put a piece of foam tape behind each of our flowers on the back of the window. This just makes sure that our shaker window doesn't kind of collapse there, and it keeps it free moving for all of those shaker bits. I have put some double-sided adhesive on the back of our window frame and now I'm putting it on the shaker walls and there we have our shaker window complete. Next I used a piece, piece of plum colored cardstock to die cut the word thanks from a Simon Says Stamp script thanks die set. Now I'm using that piece as a mat for a shaker window. No one will ever know I die cut from the center and it was a great way to save some cardstock. I wanted to add a little shine to the thanks die cut, so I'm covering it with my Sakura Clear Glaze Pen. You could use glossy accents here, but sometimes narrow die cuts like this can be tricky, and this pen is much easier. I usually put on one coat, just scribbling over it, and then I let that dry for a few minutes and put on a second coat. So here is our completed card. I did use Simon Says Stamp Fog cardstock for the note card. And you can see when you shake it, all those little bits move around inside behind that alcohol ink acetate, which I think is really cool and a great way to make your shaker window a little bit more special. 
I did add a Simon Says Stamp sentiment strip that says, you are so kind, right below our thanks die cut. I love that you can still see the sparkle of this sequence inside, even though we have the alcohol ink on the acetate. So there we have it. You all deserve a medal for completing this marathon of a video, but I hope you learned some things to try. If you are interested in the supplies I talk about, they are linked below in my YouTube description. Also, you can go to my blog where you can bookmark this video and see closer photos and more on the supplies. I really thank you for watching. At the end here, I have links to my alcohol ink playlist and another related video. Have a great week. We'll see you soon with more of Stamp Timber and happy crafting.